is the new thriller from M. Night Shyamalan, and it stars James McAvoy, Betty Buckley, and Anya Taylor-Joy, and it's about these three girls who get abducted by a man named Kevin, played by James McAvoy, and they find themselves stuck in a bunker they have no idea where, but they also realize that their captor, Kevin, actually isn't one person, because he suffers from dissociative personality disorder, and he actually has 23 other identities living inside of him, and three identities in particular, Dennis, Patricia, and Hedwig, have something very special planned that they need the three girls for. Shyamalan has had a very bipolar career that everyone pretty much knows about at this point. He's had two great films, Signs was good and The Village was okay. The rest of his films are garbage and The Visit was a really great return to form. I wouldn't still give it an A- minus though in my original review. I gave it that. I think I'd lower it to like a B plus or something. But because of The Visit though, I actually was really interested to see what else Shyamalan was going to do with his films now because it seemed like he was back on the right track. I didn't even care that this film was going to be released in January, which is a dumpster fire month for films. I just wanted to see if Shyamalan still had his groove after the visit, and he does. In fact, Split is his best film since Unbreakable. It is that great. It surpassed The Visit and Signs for me. A lot of my praise for this movie really does go to Shyamalan himself. This is definitely some of his best direction in a long time. The cinematography looks so incredible. Apparently it's from the same guy who did It Follows, which it was a great choice on Shyamalan's part, and the score for this movie legitimately creeped me out at some points, which is the first score not done by James Newton Howard. Usually him and Shyamalan do these scores for his movies together, but now James Newton Howard didn't come back and they got a new guy whose name I'm forgetting at the moment. Great score from him, though. And even the screenplay written by Shyamalan is his most impressive one in a very long time, because it's a script that makes you be patient about certain things. There are some things you want answers for, they will get revealed, you just gotta wait a little while, you just gotta pay attention. Trust in Shyamalan. And I will admit, I actually was asking certain questions near the beginning of the film, like, why are they saying this? How is this kind of important? Wait, what? And then later on in the movie, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. I got it now. And there's even a section in the movie that a lot of people would probably be like, oh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is kind of silly, Shyamalan. I thought, come on, man. But after that moment where I thought it was getting a little too goofy, there was a segment later on in the plot that actually made me go, oh, Oh, so that makes sense. Mmm, thanks Shyamalan. And since this is a part of the plot, I won't spoil it here. I'll have a little section after my grade where I will spoil the twist of this movie, but no spoilers right now. The twist in this movie literally made my mouth drop in the theater. My eyes were bugging out of my skull. I was freaking out. It was awesome. That's all I'll say for now. It's his best twist since Unbreakable, pretty much. Another thing I really appreciated Shyamalan for with this film is how he uses characterization through the plot and actually adds that into the kind of mystery patient thing that I was talking about. Because there are certain actions that Anya Taylor-Joy does and there are certain things that are a mystery about Kevin and all his other personalities that you don't know at the very start of the movie, but as the film unfolds, you start to learn more things and you actually start to care about these characters a lot more and it hits you emotionally, especially Anya Taylor-Joy's character. I really like like this actress like The Witch and Morgan, I think she did really good in those films. Though not perfect movies, she was really great in them. And this is her best role. Not only was she incredible in the role, but the character is easily the best she's played. Because the first shot of the movie is of her, and automatically you get the sense that there's something not right here. There's definitely something off about her. And even though James McAvoy is very terrifying, she's definitely not making you feel comforted in this situation because there are certain things that she knows where it's like, how did you know this? But later on in the movie, some things start to unfold, and it's like, wow, it hit me emotionally. And James McAvoy, by far, was the best part of this film. He was on fire in this film. And he doesn't play all 23 personalities. That's a huge part in the marketing that he plays all 23. He doesn't because if he did, the movie would be like three hours long. But it actually works for the three identities that he mainly plays, Patricia, Dennis, and Hedwig incredible. He's great at it, especially the nine-year-old Hedwig. Not just because it's funny seeing him pretend to be a nine-year-old, but also because Hedwig is the comedic relief 
but he's also a creeper because there are certain moments where I was laughing at him. One scene in particular, it was just hysterical. I was bawling my eyes out with laughter. But then there's some moments where he's just like, oh, that's a... Uh, that's a little creepy. And the scenes where James McAvoy is interacting with Betty Buckley's character, who's his, pretty much his therapist, who's learning about disassociative identity disorder, those scenes were really incredible because they kind of give you a little bit of backstory on Kevin as a character, and there are even some other moments that give you more backstory on him, maybe why his personalities came to be, that I really, really dug. And even Betty Buckley, who was in another Shyamalan film, I forget which one, she was actually really good in this film. I was worried that she was just going to be a one-dimensional therapist type character, but she actually wasn't. She turned out to be really solid. I will say there are two problems I had with this movie, one of them being the dialogue in two scenes in particular. There's the beginning scene, the first conversation had between two characters. I was like, mm, that's a little cringy. And then there's a moment like 10 minutes after that where someone gives out a really unnecessary line that could have been cut in two, but since they didn't cut it in two, it just came across really awkward. And I was like, I don't think anyone really would say it like that. And my other problem with this movie is that even though I adore the characterization with Kevin and Anya Taylor-Joy's character, the two other girls that are with Anya Taylor-Joy, I just didn't really care for them as much. They're not awfully acted or anything, they weren't irritating, it's just that compare the, these characters to Anya Taylor-Joy and James McAvoy and they just don't compare. They didn't learn anything, I didn't learn anything more about them, they just felt like they had to be there because there needs to be more more people than just Anya Taylor-Joy. But overall, Split, I really adored this film. I love it a lot. Shyamalan, I think he's officially back, guys. No need to worry. I think he's finally back into the swing of things. Good on you, Shyamalan, and I'm gonna give Split an A-. McAvoy was incredible, the other acting was really great, the script was so superb, and the twist, his best twist sense, unbreakable. And now, since I've given my grade, I'm going to spoil the twist of the movie. If you haven't seen the movie yet, leave the video, because here we go. The twist of this movie is that near the end of the film, they're in a bar after McAvoy has disappeared as this beast personality, and it's all over the news that the beast is now loose, and the news is talking about it, and some girl at the bar is like, huh, it reminds me of a guy who's really crazy, like, you know, the one in the wheelchair, and as soon as that person said that dialogue, I was like, oh, she's referencing Unbreakable, that's pretty sweet, and then all of a sudden, David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, from Unbreakable, shows up right next to this lady telling her the name, yeah, Mr. Glass, and it's like, oh my god, this is an unbreakable movie? And apparently, James McAvoy's character was actually a character that was originally going to be in Unbreakable that Shyamalan just couldn't use, so they made a whole movie about him. This honestly was so incredible, because thinking back to James McAvoy turning into the Beast, at first it's kind of goofy, but when you realize, oh, He's a supervillain in a world of realistic heroes and villains. It actually makes a lot of sense, and this actually sets up some really interesting uh, ideas for the future of Shyamalan's films, if there will be an Unbreakable 2, finally, or a whole series of Unbreakable movies. I don't know, but I can't wait to see what Shyamalan does next. Hoping it's Unbreakable 2, because I need it right now. Need more Bruce Willis, and definitely more McAvoy, and maybe Samuel L. Jackson as Mr. Glass coming back. But if you saw Split, leave in the comments below of what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.